Hi, thanks for joining us today. I'm Valerie Durant, here to present to you an insider's guide to peer review for applicants. I'm a scientific review officer, or SRO, at NIH, and I've been here for 12 years. Over that time, I've had the opportunity to work with hundreds of reviewers and applicants, colleagues across the NIH, and be part of thousands of reviews. My goal in this presentation is really to pull together information and advice that you can use from various sources in preparing your grant application. So we've gathered information and regularly gather information from study section chairs, from reviewers, and from NIH staff. We've pulled that together to present to you today. As I was talking to a reviewer after a recent study section meeting about her experience, she said, you know, I really wish I knew then, meaning when I was writing my application, what I know now after having been through the process, because you really get a good insight into what reviewers are looking for and what will make a better application. And that's what we want to share with you today. Before we get into your application, there are a few things that it would be useful for you to know about the NIH process as general background. First, the scientific review of applications at NIH is separate and independent from funding decisions. There are two groups of people that handle these things separately. So this, the evaluation of the scientific merit which, of your application, which is done in review, is different from any of the funding decisions or the posting of funding announcements and encouragement and solicitation of specific research ideas. Another thing to know is that review panels are broad and interdisciplinary, so we intentionally build panels that cover a broad range of science, um, but hang together in a, around a scientific theme. And you'll get a good sense of these and which study sections might be most appropriate for your research ideas by looking at our rosters at www.csr.nih.gov slash rosters. Finally, in thinking about an application and your ideas, you'll want to pay attention to the review criteria for the applications. For research applications at NIH, the review criteria include significance, investigator, innovation, approach, and environment, and reviewers are asked to pull together their thoughts on these into their overall impact for science. Different activity codes or types of applications will have different review criteria, so you'll want to pay attention to the specific review criteria for the type of application that you're interested in pursuing. Okay, so as you get started in, in working on your application or thinking about applying to NIH, there's a few things you want to do even before you get down to the writing. You need to do your homework. First, we recommend that you talk to NIH program staff at the institutes about various research ideas in general, what they're interested in supporting, or if they're interested in supporting what you're interested in, and different types of mechanisms or types of applications that may be best, a best fit for your idea. Program officials have a variety of different ways in which they fund research and fund applicants, and you'll want to know what your options are. Sometimes these differ across institutes, so checking in with them to get an idea of what they're interested in and what your options are is a good place to start. Second, it's a good idea if you talk to applicants both successful and unsuccessful at your own institutions and find out about their experiences, what worked for them in writing their applications, what are the lessons that they learned throughout the process, both in writing and um, in getting feedback from review and then with the funding. You want to check out the review instructions, deadlines, and guidelines so you know what you need to do to complete your package. You're probably familiar with the research plan and what you need to do to put together a research plan, but applications also involve lots of other components, including budgets, um, human subjects, if that applies, vertebrate animal sections, if that applies. There are lots of rules and regulations in different pieces of an application, some of which have to be done before you submit the application and some of which can come in later. And so you'll want to have a good sense of what you need to do to complete your package before you get started so that you can plan your time accordingly and know all the pieces that you'll need to do. Your institution can probably provide support for some of these things, so you may want to check in with them and find out what they can provide you help with and what you'll need to be responsible for on your own. Finally, come up with your idea and develop just a really brief one-page summary that highlights what you think the, your goals are, what you're trying to accomplish, what, a, a general overview of your project, and share that with people at NIH, like the program directors, as well as people at your institution for feedback. You want to get an idea of whether this is a reasonable idea or not before you get going and get started into the long application process. 
Once you have the big picture, you then need to come up with your specific idea or project. What we recommend and what we hear from chairs and reviewers is to start with significance. If you don't have an important question, if reviewers can't answer that, why should I care about this project, you're gonna have a hard time getting, finding success in the process. So what can you do? What, what are you looking for? Um, some of the comments that we hear from reviewers and chairs on a regular basis are, think about what are the current controversies or issues of importance to the field. It should be something that people care about. Second, you'll want to bring something new to the table. You'll want to make sure that you and your project can make a contribution. Finally, don't be too narrow. Your project and your topic has to be broad enough to generate interest beyond just those who care about your immediate field or questions. And we'll talk about this a little bit more in a second. You also want to keep your project focused and feasible. So when you're selecting your research questions and your hypotheses and what you're going to frame your research project around, make sure you check out the scope. Don't make it too big. Make it something that you can really concentrate on and, and provide enough detail, enough meat around that the reviewers understand what you're going to be doing, how you're going to do it, and what we're going to get out of it at the end. Basically, to summarize what I've been saying is the idea is pretty critical. You cannot disguise a weak idea with great grantsmanship. So no matter how good of a writer you are, you have to have a good idea to get it off the ground. Having said that, and where we're going next is in the writing. Because bad grantsmanship can disguise a good idea. So let's turn a little bit to what you want to think about when you're actually writing your application. First, as I mentioned before in talking about the significance, you'll want to actually sell your project in your application specifically address and talk about how will your study advance the field? Where are we now? What will your study provide? Or how will it advance the field? And what will we know at the end? As you're doing this, remember that the research topic or the general topic you're talking about is not necessarily the full story. What you're writing about may be of interest, but really what you're selling is your application or the project that you're going to do. And what you need to do is sell the significance of that project, not just the general topic. You'll also want to know your audience. So keep in mind the reviewers. Again, this is where you'll want to check out the rosters for the different types of panels. Get a sense of how broad the expertise is on each panel, what types of expertise are on the panels. The scientific uh, boundaries of panels differ. So go into your application with an idea of the type of breadth that's on the panel. Panels uh, include a broad range of expertise and perspectives and backgrounds, and you'll want to make sure that you are recognizing that not everyone may be an expert in your area. When you're thinking about your aims and your hypotheses, you'll want to articulate each aim and how it advances the overall project. Specifically tell reviewers with each aim what you will do, why it matters, how you will do it, and how each piece contributes to the whole. This comes up over and over in comments from reviewers and chairs when they're not sure either how aims are integrated with each other, what the rationale is behind some of the aims, or have concerns or questions because the methods are written in what is considered a vague way. When you're doing this, keep in mind that the reviewers are asked to assess feasibility in many ways of your project. And what they're looking for there is rationale. Have you explained what you're doing and why you're doing it? Have you provided enough information on your methods that they can figure out what you're doing? And when appropriate for the different types of applications, have you provided preliminary data that shows that you know what you're talking about and that uh, statements you're making are likely to lead to success? The other thing that we hear a lot from reviewers is that you want to address potential pitfalls and challenges in the approach. If you you're not going to fool the reviewers by not mentioning a potential problem that could come up with your approach. If there's multiple ways to do things, you probably want to acknowledge that and explain why you've selected the way you're doing it and what you're going to do if things don't necessarily work out exactly as planned. Reviewers see that as confidence that you know what you're doing. Finally, in writing your application, help the reviewers do their work. Clearly organize your ideas. Be succinct, state what you say without lots of extra words. Within each section, the sections of the application are organized generally around the review criteria and it's helpful for the reviewers. If you provide a brief summary of the critical elements, think of it as kind of writing the critique for the reviewers. What do you want them to remember about significance? What do you want them to remember and keep in mind about innovation, 
and your approach as they're going through and, and assessing these aspects of your application. Keep it readable. Try not to use a lot of uh, slang, acronyms, small print. Um, one of my colleagues at the Institute phrases this as, don't annoy your reviewers. If they have to struggle to figure out what you're trying to say, if they have to put on their fine print glasses and really struggle just to get through the page, it makes it harder for them to do their work, they get frustrated, and they can lose track of your good ideas and the main points that you're trying to make. Finally, proofread, proofread, proofread again, and give it to somebody else to proofread as well. Oftentimes, little errors, typos, and sloppiness in an application can raise questions about the quality of your potential research, even though that's probably not what you intend. Finally, as you get your applications back after the review meeting, uh, with the critiques and the follow-up from the review, remember that it often takes a resubmission before an application is successful. So as you get your critiques, don't panic if you're not funded or not discussed. Lots of investigators have been through this path before. The most important thing to do is carefully read through your critiques, seek guidance from program directors, both on interpreting the critiques and, and helping to really understand the, the comments that the reviewers are making, but also in identifying next steps, and revise and resubmit. There are more resources available that go into some of these points in greater detail. The first resource I would point you to is the Insider's Guide to Peer Review for Applicants at http colon slash slash www.csr.nih.gov slash applicant resources slash insider. This includes a lot of valuable information that we've gathered from chairs of study sections. Also, if you want more information on grant writing tips, you can get that at www.csr.nih.gov slash links and more NIH grant writing tips at http colon slash slash grants.nih.gov slash grants slash grant underscore tips dot htm. Thanks.